Greetings, my name is Andy Anderson and welcome to In the Kitchen with Andy. And a big shout out to my sister Rita who lives down in Punta Gorda, Florida, who's probably now hiding under a table. This is my very first episode and I know I'm going to get picked up by PBS or Food Network. It's obvious, it's inevitable. So what are we going to do on my first, uh, probably my last episode? Well, the main ingredient is crab. So let's start here with a survey. How many of you out there like crab? How many don't? Now, if your hand went down, suggestion, you can cut it right now because basically the main ingredient is crab. Now, I got this recipe out of memories of my past. It's still out there. It's a crab spread inside of a soft pretzel with cheeses and baked. If you come from Maine, you probably already know about these. Now, we're not going to use pretzels for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't have any. And uh, well, basically, if I'm going to do this, I'd like to make them, and I don't want to make any pretzels. But the other thing is, I don't want a one-trick pony. This is a main ingredient. When you do chicken, do you always do chicken with mashed potatoes and peas? Uh, well, I don't know, maybe some of you do, but most of you probably don't. You vary things. This is the main ingredient to vary. What I want to do is use it in two recipes. One is more of a sandwich. It's on a butter-toasted croissant. I love saying that word, and apologies to all the French, you know I mispronounced it. And the other one is doing a red potato, or unless you say potato, cut in half, drilled out with the stuff in it and baked, kind of like an hors d'oeuvre. Now, what we want to do now is look at our ingredients. So let's look at what we have. Number one, eight ounces of cream cheese softened. Now, by softened, as soft as possible without going liquid, make it room temperature. One and a half tablespoons of Old Bay seasoning. Now, Old Bay Seasoning, some people like a lot, some people don't, so I'm going to hit the middle here and say one and a half instead of two. One quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now, if you've got the stuff in the tin, which I call the dust in the tin, don't bother adding it. It's not going to make any difference. Freshly ground. We're talking two teaspoons of lemon juice, freshly squeezed. I'm picky. One tablespoon of Worcestershire. One half teaspoon of sugar, the granulated variety. One half teaspoon of rice, wine, or sushi vinegar. And that's one half teaspoon. So to be honest with you, if you don't want to buy a bottle of, say, rice vinegar for one half teaspoon, use white vinegar. You're going to be fine. Next, eight ounces of crab meat. I like back fin. Why? Well, you can get the giant, like, huge lump crab kind. It's twice as expensive. It's not really necessary in this recipe, although presentation-wise, I don't know, I guess it looks a little bit better. We'll use back fin because it's a little less expensive. Then we're going to go into one half of a cup of Colby cheese. Now, why not uh, sharp cheddar or an aged cheddar? Because I want the crab to be the star of the show. And if we keep throwing all this stuff at it, you're not going to taste the crab. So we're going to be using Colby. It's a mild cheese. And then a couple of green onions, sliced thinly, the white parts only. Those are the ingredients. This is what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by making the crab meat spread. Now, that's kind of like the main ingredient here. So combine the Old Bay the black pepper, the Worcestershire, lemon juice, vinegar, sugar, and the softened cream cheese in a large working bowl. Now blend it until it's completely smooth. Now if you want to, you could use a blender here if you want to, like an egg beater kind of thing. Up to you. But blend it until it's softened and smooth. Now the next step is really kind of important. Pull out your crab meat and look for any additional shells that they may have forgotten to take out. I hate it when that happens. And then very carefully, very carefully, try not to break it up, fold it into the softened cream cheese mixture. Okay, now we've got the first step done. The second step is how we apply it. So what we're going to do on croissants, do this. Take a croissant or more and cut it in half. Now take the bottom half and brush some melted butter on it. In a good hot pan, medium high, put the buttered side down and toast it in that pan. And keep an eye on them so they don't burn. But as soon as they're toasted, go ahead and take them out. Now take some of the crab meat and spread it very nicely on that bottom piece. Don't worry about the top piece yet. Now at this point, once you've done that, you can 
put these aside, like say put them in the refrigerator and cover them uh, 12 hours maybe, you'll be fine. So if you want to make these up front for a dinner party and you want to do it in the morning so you don't have to worry about it, you could do it and then put them in there. Bring them out about an hour before the next step so they warm up just a little bit. Now for the next step, what I want you to do is take some butter and melted butter and butter the top piece. Next, take some of the shredded Colby and put it on top of the bottom, the one that has the crab meat on it. Take the top and the bottom and put them on a plain baking sheet. We're going to broil this, so if you put them on parchment paper, it's going to burn, so you don't want that. Plain baking sheets. Put your oven, oh, put the rack about in the second or third position from the top. Don't go all the way to the top. Turn your broiler on. Let it get all fired up. Put the croissant with the crab and the top piece that we buttered on the baking sheet. Buttered side up, of course, for the other croissant piece. And stick them in the oven. Now, this is not going to take long. I would say two or three minutes. The top buttered side will be nice and toasty. And the bottom, it's got the crab meat and the cheese, will be bubbly and it'll start to brown just a little bit. That's going to happen fast, so watch it. Immediately pull them out. Now, the other thing is, what I like to do anyway, is I cut the top and the bottom separately, okay? I do that separately because I don't want them to stick together. And then I kind of position them well, kind of like this to give it a better presentation. Well, that's about it. I'll tell you what, these things don't last long. They are delicious. Now, if you're doing the appetizer, basically we're talking about red potatoes. You're going to cook them, boiling water for about 20 minutes, cut them in half, Use a melon baller or something like that to kind of core out the inside, leave a hole. I leave about a half or a quarter inch of flesh on the inside so they don't fall apart. And then take a nice heaping tablespoon of our crab meat and stick it right inside there. Put a little Colby on top and put them in the broiler just like we did for the sandwiches. They won't last long either, I want to tell you. This is an excellent starter for just about anything. Could be toast points, could be, well, red potatoes, could be croissants could be just about anything you want. So I'll tell you what, this is Andy Anderson saying, keep the faith, guys, and keep cooking.